Hi guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Sam Evans and this is The Electric Singularity. Now, as you know, I've been reporting recently on some really interesting developments with BYD. Not only is BYD manufacturing the blade battery for other auto companies, but they're also bringing cars to Australia. Now, I believe that means they could be bringing cars to your country as well soon. That is, if you're not an Australian. Now, many people haven't heard of BYD, but they should have by now. I've got to admit, I've got to embarrassingly admit that I barely knew about anything about BYD before I heard about the Australian launch of the EA1. Since then, I've been on a crash course to learn as much as I possibly can about this company. Now, remember, Warren Buffett, the world's greatest investor, owns a 10% share of BYD. There's a reason for that. BYD's earnings multiples are 100x, Tesla's are 1000x. Don't get me wrong, I am a Tesla shareholder. I recommend you buy Tesla. And I also recommend, after doing research for the last few weeks, that you buy BYD. Why is that? Well, I believe BYD are going to be one of the biggest players in the worldwide market for electric vehicles. They had the capacity to scale up. They manufacture their own batteries. They manufacture a range of electric vehicle parts, not just the batteries, but other parts. And they know what they are doing. That's the reason why Toyota is bringing them in to build their electric car. Well, at least to provide the skateboard, the motors and the batteries for their electric cars. Now, obviously, BYD wouldn't be have been chosen by Tesla if they weren't offering an extremely good, high-level quality product. One of the biggest advantages that I've discovered of BYD versus almost every other competitor on the market is their batteries don't catch fire when pierced. Now, this is huge. In fact, I can see a very large amount of the market transitioning to this type of battery because, as you know, it's very, very hard to put out a battery fire when you have a lithium ion battery fire you almost have to just let the thing burn out and it can take days to burn out. So it would be a huge advantage to have a battery that simply doesn't catch fire. So the blade battery is revolutionary. And remember, Hyundai just had a huge recall. They had to recall every one of their cars made worldwide, every one of their battery electric cars, and replace all of the batteries. Now you can imagine the enormous embarrassment to Hyundai and the enormous cost. So what are Hyundai doing? They're now in, in discussions with BYD to use BYD's blade batteries. Now, in this video, I'm going to share with you some more information about BYD that I don't think you would know. At least, I think 99% of people would know this information. So as the automotive industry rapidly pivots from combustion to electric vehicles, many OEMs are racing to set up lithium-ion battery supply deals. At the same time, OEMs are increasingly concerned about vesting such a large proportion of the value of their EVs outside of the company. As their role in modern technology becomes more critical, batteries have become a new battleground. With those in possession of the best technology or the most lucrative supply deals likely to become dominant in the future. To capture as much value as possible within their own walls, several OEMs are now looking to more vertical integration for battery supply. This will be driven by the concern of a large third-party developers such as BYD, one of the fastest growing providers of batteries in the industry. In addition, BYD has its own extensive vehicle production network under the BYD Auto brand. Here's my primer on BYD, what it is, where it came from, and where they're going. The name BYD Co Limited stands for Build Your Dreams. They were founded in 19 95 as BYD Auto in 2003. They set up as a rechargeable battery manufacturer in 1995 and they listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2002. Growth came from strong sales of batteries for mobile phone handsets. BYD created BYD Auto after purchasing Quin Chan Machinery Works in 2002. Quin Chan had been manufacturing cars since 1987. The CEO is Wang Shan Fu, and he's also the founder of the company. So in some ways, they're similar in the sense that Elon Musk 
is virtually a founder of Tesla, and so is Wang. Their products, lithium-ion battery cells for passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles, and energy storage systems. In addition, the company manufactures lithium-ion batteries for consumer electronics, such as smartphones and other electronic components. BYD Auto, the company's automotive manufacturing subsidiary, builds a range of electric of battery electric, hybrid electric, and combustion-powered passenger cars, commercial vehicles, trucks, and buses. Revenue. Q1 to Q3 2020 was Chinese yen 4.79 billion, and it was down 43.7% compared with Q1 to Q3 2019. However, they were also up 100% in Q1 of 2021. I believe the trend here for BYD is going to be extremely positive over the next 12 months. Operating profit, Q1 to Q3, 2020, Chinese yen, 221.9 million, down 17.8% compared with Q1 to Q3, 2019. However, operating profit is up in Q1 of 2021. Competitive position. They are number five for global market share of EV battery manufacturing. For EV manufacturing, number one in China, LG Energy Solutions, number two, CATL, number three, Panasonic, number four, Samsung, number five, BYD. Battery technology, the Blade Battery. Announced in March 2020, the Blade Battery is a new battery pack concept focused on increased range and safety. Remarkably good performance in the nail test where a nail is driven through the battery cell has shown in typical lithium ion cells that this could start a fire but the BYD blade battery is resistant to this. In addition, it's highly resistant to extremes of heat and overcharging, giving it many charging cycles. Remove modules from the pack and mounts cells directly into the pack structure. This reduces wasted weight and improves efficiency. BYD are expecting to get its production introduction in the 2021 BYD Tang SUV and EA1 and also the Han. It's claimed to have a useful range of 1.2 million kilometers, or roughly 3,000 charge cycles. This gives the, the BYD Tang SUV a claimed range of 314 miles. The pack can be charged from 30% to 80% in only 30 minutes. The pack is made up of lithium iron phosphate cells, and they are swapped out versus the typical lithium iron cathode materials such as lithium cobalt oxide or lithium iron phosphate. This makes the batteries cheaper and obviously means they have less reliance on exotic materials. Lithium iron phosphate cells have a lower overall energy density, so are less common in passenger vehicles where long range and low weight is prized. They are, however, much safer than lithium iron cells, with more stable performance across a wide range of operating temperatures and a lower risk of spontaneous combustion. Lithium iron phosphate is also less resource intensive than lithium iron especially thanks to its removal of cobalt, which is an expensive element that comes with added concerns of human rights abuses in places where it is mined. Technology is well suited to low range, high longevity applications, such as forklift trucks and other low speed vehicles. BYD's facility in Manaus, Brazil began production and operation in September, 2020 with a capacity for 18,000 modules per year intended for buses and other mobility equipment. BYD's rival, CATL, is manufacturing lithium iron phosphate cells for Tesla in China to be used in entry-level versions of the Model 3 sedan built in Shanghai. If the batteries are good enough for Tesla, then they're probably going to be good enough for BYD. And obviously, they're now apparently good enough for Toyota and Hyundai. Production basis. Batteries production. Shenzhen, capacity of 14 gigawatt hours per year. They have a plant also in Huzhou, capacity, sorry guys, I'm not pronouncing this correctly, I know that, but hopefully you get the picture. Capacity at Huzhou of two gigawatt per year. Qinghai, China, capacity 24 gigawatt hours. Manus, Brazil, capacity 18,000 modules per year. Xi'an, China, plant capacity of 21, 20 gigawatt hours per year. Chongqing, China, planned capacity of 20 gigawatt hours per year. Bengbu, China, planned capacity of 20 gigawatt hours per year. As you can see, they're rapidly scaling up battery production all around the world, primarily though in China.
where obviously the costs are lower. Vehicle manufacturing. They manufacture vehicles in Beijing, China, Xi'an, China, Changsha, China, Shenguan, China, Lancaster, California, USA, Alon, France, Camorum, Hungary, Yorkshire, and Central Scotland, UK. As you can see, they manufacture vehicles all over the world. They have a very broad manufacturing base. And they also manufacture electronics in India. BYD production capacity. BYD's current production capacity is estimated to be around 60 gigawatt hours per year. Now, obviously, the number will have dramatically increased this year. It had previously stated an intention to increase this figure to around 100 gigawatt hours for 2020. However, battery demand saw a significant short-term drop throughout 2020 as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Assuming a 60 gigawatt hour annual capacity, BYD currently produces enough for roughly 1 million mid-sized electric vehicles, assuming they use a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. BYD's range includes both large electric vehicles in the form of buses and trucks, along with small vehicles such as battery-powered city cars. Considering the respective battery pack sizes of BYD's vehicles varies considerably, it is difficult to calculate an average per vehicle kilowatt hour figure, and as a result, to know how many vehicles BYD's annual battery production capacity translates to. In 2020, BYD sold nearly 427,000 vehicles, a 7.5% drop on 2019's figure. In February 2019, BYD confirmed that it had broken ground on a new facility and in Chongqing Municipality, China for battery production. The new facility represents an investment of around Chinese yen 10 billion, is expected to have an annual capacity of 20 gigawatt hours. Later in December 2020, BYD announced it would open yet another facility, this time in Benghu, Anhui Province, China. Total investment for this facility is expected to be around Chinese yen 6 billion and is also intended to have an annual capacity of 20 gigawatt hours. The latest two announcements will take BYD to its previously stated goal of 100 gigawatt hours of capacity. Joint Venture Activity Hino BYD Joint Venture Established in October 2020, the two companies will set up a joint company for commercial EV development. This will begin operations in China sometime in 2021. BYD and Hino will both make a 50% investment and will work to identify the best spread of commercial EVs to sell to customers. Obviously, Hino builds trucks, so BYD are getting into the trucking market. They're already in the trucking market, but obviously they're looking to expand that and use Hino's experience. Joint venture number two. Toyota BYD joint venture. This is an agreement between the two and was first reached in November 2019, called BYD Toyota EV Technology, focused on research and development of battery electric vehicles. Operations began in May 2020 and are headquartered in Pingshan District, Guangdong Province. This employs around 300 people with chairman from Toyota and CEO from BYD. There's a 50-50 holding between Toyota and BYD in this joint venture which is initially focused on developing EVs for the Chinese market. Joint venture number three, Chang'an BYD joint venture. Announced in July 2018, this joint venture will establish a new venture to build batteries and new energy vehicles. Chang'an is one of the big four Chinese state-owned OEMs. The battery joint venture will include a new battery production facility in Chongqing, China, with an initial annual capacity of five to six gigawatt hours. This will be increased to a total of 10 gigawatt hours over its lifetime. The partnership includes commitment to also develop autonomous driving and EV technology, including battery recycling and fast charging. Both firms have committed to improving supply chain management and car assembly techniques. For ECR BYD joint venture. This joint venture was announced in October 2017 called Shenzhen Forisha Automotive Parts Co. Limited. Farisha holds 70% and BYD holds 30%. This joint venture develops and manufactures seating systems for BYD branded vehicles and affiliated vehicles. Sales were expected to be around Chinese yen 2.4 billion by the end of 2020, pre-COVID. The next joint venture is with Daimler or Mercedes. Daimler BYD joint venture. One of the first established joint ventures between a premium Western manufacturer and a Chinese company established in 2010. 
Initial investment was Chinese yen 600 million, with BYD and Daimler both holding 50%. The joint venture created a new auto brand called Denza. Concept vehicles was shown in 2013 before launching their first production model in 2014. The Denza 500 used the chassis from a Mercedes B Class, an EV powertrain, and battery components supplied by BYD. Its second model launched in 2019 called the Denza X, using a platform from the BYD Tang electric SUV. Poor sales have limited the Denza's reach in China. The 500 only sold around 14,000 units in its production run, while the X has struggled to top 4,000 units per year since its introduction. Their next joint venture was Alexander Dennis Limited, ADL, BYD joint venture. This partnership between BYD and the UK's ADL bus manufacturer was established in 2015 and has since received more than 500 orders. Initially, BYD would manufacture the EV bus chassis and then send it to the UK to have its body fitted by ADL. In 2021, the joint venture confirmed that fully full chassis assembly would now take place in the UK for both single and double-decker buses. UK assembly is expected to commence in the second half of 2021. A very similar joint venture is taking place right now in Australia with an Australian company and BYD. The Australian company Nextport has set up right-hand drive production lines in the BYD factory where they are BYD's manufacturing for Nextport right-hand drive vehicles that they will then import to Australia and sell in Australia. It is believed my estimates based on the numbers that I've seen from initial interest that sales will be very large of this EV and they won't be able to supply enough product to meet demand in Australia. Other agreements, Berkshire Hathaway Investment. In 2008, US investment company Berkshire Hathaway, fronted by Warren Buffett, made a 230 million investment in BYD in return for a 10% stake in the company. The investment recognized the strength of BYD in electric vehicles and would be the first step in exporting them from China to other markets, potentially including North America. By 2021, that share had been diluted to 8.2%, but represented a larger holding to Berkshire Hathaway than its stake in US auto company General Motors. This proved to be a shrewd investment, with BYD share price growing 300% over the course of 2020, with Berkshire Hathaway's investment growing more than 3,000% since it was first purchased. Obviously, Berkshire Hathaway are keen for BYD to begin shipping vehicles to the United States. It is my belief this will happen within the next 12 months. Guys, thank you for watching the video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel as I will be releasing a series of different announcements about BYD's joint ventures and BYD's new cars that are coming to Australia and I believe to other countries, including Norway, over the next six months. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye.